So we're going to jump right into this article here on you dot today. And it's about this prediction that John Deaton is making about Bitcoin, ETH and XRP being around in five years. Of course, XRP is going to be around in five years. They're working with multiple governments. They're working with hundreds of banks. Hundreds are signed up to use RippleNet. Um, XRP is not going anywhere. And, and Ripple is not the only one building on the XRPL. You have a lot of businesses building on the XRPL. They just don't have a loud voice in a big platform. So others are going to use XRP as well. Anybody can build on these on these blockchains or DLTs, if you will. Same thing with Stellar. You have so many businesses building on building on Stellar blockchain. XLM isn't going anywhere. Algorand isn't going anywhere. Don't get me wrong. Algorand Inc. does a lot of great work. So does Algorand Foundation. But you also have Offerings like Koi Banks building on Algorand, making major moves, major moves. They're not going anywhere. The bank coins are the ones that are here to stay and they have the superior technologies. You want to talk about ETH? Yeah, ETH is a cute, smart contract platform. Algorand is better. Hedera is better, by far better. And if you really look up, just do a Google search and type in blockchain versus half graph, hash graph or type in something like hash graph superior to blockchain. Hashgraph is far superior to blockchain if you look at the fundamental technologies. They're not going anywhere. Zenfin, XDC, Trade Finance, they're not going anywhere. They were praised by the World Economic Forum. They're not going anywhere. These are, these are the technologies uh, that the legacy system in the world literally need. They need. It's going to put out the fires that are currently burning and will, if they're allowed to, burn everything to the ground. We have the water hose, so to speak. We have the liquidity cushion. We have the flood. And a great flood, in my opinion, is coming. Who's going to be on the ship? Who knows? Who knows? When the when the money waters rise, who knows? We shall see. <laughs> but yeah, so that's why I think about that. And it, it says here, Bitcoin as a store of value. I prefer gold as a store of value. Second, also, do not underestimate the need for liquidity. You think they're just going to leave liquidity on the side? You think that's not going to be like one of their on-demand liquidity? Listen, there's a variety of ways you can use it. The banking system needs liquidity so bad. It's unbelievable. But when you see those injections, like what the Bank of England did, remember the, the, the Bank of Japan, the, the uh, Central Bank of Japan, they did that. They, 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 uh, not flush the system, but they flooded flooded the system with money. Then because of their fractionalized banking, <laughs> high interest rates, fractionalized banking. Holy smokes. People came to me in droves telling me, hey, no, the banks are safe. The banks are OK. The banks can never fail. The people were saying all of this. They don't have liquidity. They also don't have interoperability. They're not with, with all the systems they're building. They don't have interoperability. That's going to be a major, major, major problem, but it plays in our favor, majorly. So then we have this article here. It's from Stellar. There's so much going on with XLM and Stellar. My goodness. And they, they're so veiled. They're so sneaky. And I don't say that in a negative way. I say that because the way they talk is very coded. The way they're the reason that they're doing things, in my opinion, is very, very uh, covert. It is. When you try to put logic to what they're doing and you rip off that mask of kindness, you see the truth. It says here, as a part of the committee, they're talking about on the CFTC advisory board, right? As a part of the committee, SDF will highlight the role of stable coins in the digital asset market. Let me stop right there. I want to <laughs> stable coins. Stellar's going deep with stable coins, Algorand, XR, Ripple, XRP. Why? They're like a light version of a CB, CBDC. You heard me say that before, but now let's link it to something else. Who's trying to take over crypto? When all of these dirty exchanges went down, right? Who was trying to buy up certain assets, buy up certain properties, the banks? Who was it that came out with the paper uh, basically laying it out. They came out with three papers, actually, laying out how they could pretty much take over DeFi. Bank of International Settlements. The banks are the ones who want to be the issuers of stable coins. Then you have an article. I have an article here somewhere where the, a bunch of different financial institutions were coming together 
Let me see if I have that. They were coming together in the United States to issue their own stable coin. But more than likely, they're going to do what uh, I think the Fed had postulated, that banks could just use something like USDC. Then you saw Circle for a while was positioning, positioning itself where USDC could be utilized by banks and other financial institutions. Heck, you see what's going on with MoneyGram, don't you? It doesn't just stop there. So, oh, and also it was the Fed, and we cover that document, where the Fed was talking about how stable coins are basically a light version of a CBDC. And in fact, I, I'm paraphrasing, but the Fed says something to the nature of, we may not even need a CBDC because of stable coins. Now, why is that important when we're thinking about Stellar? Well, I want to read this little tidbit here. Oh, and here's the article actually. It was, it's titled, U.S. Banks Form Group to Offer USDF Stablecoin. That's not going to happen. Uh, I mean, if it happens, they won't, have, they won't have great success. But what I want to say about stablecoins is when stablecoins are conscripted by banks, the stablecoins, well, even now they're going to have a problem with liquidity. They just do. They can be depegged quite easily uh, under the right circumstances. But as soon as they go into the banks, they're treated as bank deposits. I have a, a document here, actually, and I'm going to let the Federal Reserve say something quite eloquently. Get a load of this. It says here, finally, we outline possible scenarios for bank reserves, credit intermediation and central bank balance sheets should stable coins gain broader traction. That means that if the banks are going to be moving stable coins, uh, either majorly or uh, partially with like uh, offerings like um, circle as as issuers and such like that. Right. But let's continue on here. This is our research suggests the broad adoption of asset backed stable coins can potentially be supported within a two tiered fractional reserve banking system without a negative impact on credit intermediation. Now, here's the important part. And be careful of these banks weaving their weaving thoughts into people's minds with magical words. See the truth of the banks. But let me let me relate, lay this out for you. It says here in, a, in such a framework, stable coins, stable coins reserves are held as commercial bank deposits and commercial banks engage in fractional reserve lending and maturity transformation as they normally would with traditional bank deposits. What does that mean? They just expose themselves. They're gonna be lending out your stable coins the same way they do with any bank deposits. Which means when you go to get your stable coins from the bank, they, they're not gonna be able to give you your 100,000 in stable coins because they lent it out. They're gonna say the same thing to you that they do when you're trying to get cash. What do you need this for? Oh, you gotta give us a few days. They don't have liquidity. So now circling back around to Stellar pushing stable coins, where do you get the liquidity? Hmm. I mean, this is all theoretical, but there is a little asset called XLM Lumens, the native, you know, uh, the native uh, coin token of the Stellar blockchain. And one of its jobs and duties is to provide liquidity for otherwise illiquid assets. Think about that for a minute. Think about that. What would it do to the price of XLM? If the banks were to start moving USDC or whatever stable coins are going to be, or they're issuing their own stable coins on Stellar, they can do that as well. And yet they don't have liquidity. We know that already. Then where does the liquidity come from? Now, there's no guarantees in this. I could be completely wrong, but I think it would be foolish, like I said plenty of times, for them not to access that instant liquidity of XLM, a liquidity token. There, You would literally be chopping yourself at the knee. Stable coins need liquidity. One, they're one to one backed. Well, when they, yeah, they're one to one backed until they get to a, a bank and then they take your one to one backed stable coin and they lend it out just like they do everything else. That's how the banks make their money. They lend your money out, fractionalized banking. They're not going to change that. So the same problem arises. They have no liquidity. 
So how do you plan to solve that, Stellar? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry. I never forget about XLM. It's a long hold to me. Long hold to me. I see where you're going. I believe it. I believe I do. I could be wrong, but I don't think that I am. And I don't speak for anybody else. Everybody has to make their own decisions. I only speak for myself, but sneaky, sneaky, Stellar, but you can't, you can't fool me. No, you can't. Let's, uh, let's continue on here. So it, then it says here, it says, we also find that replacement of physical cash banknotes with stable coins could result in more credit intermediation. So it causes another problem. What is credit intermediation? Let's go here. Let's look at this little definition here. Credit intermediation acts as middlemen. Oh, so intermediaries. So there's going to be more intermediaries, which makes sense. Because now let's say they're working with USDC or whatever asset issuer. And uh, now you got to work with USDC. And now you got to work with whatever other intermediaries the banks are using to lend out and, 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 and uh, do their lending uh, abilities with uh, fractionalized banking. Uh, so now you have all of these different intermediaries. Maybe that's what they mean. That's a problem. We're trying to get less intermediaries, not more. So it says credit intermediation acts as middlemen for two parties in a lending process by proposing and presenting credit agreements to consumers. Furthermore, credit intermediation, such as commercial banks, credit unions and other institutions enter into agreements to grant credit to consumers on behalf of a lending institutions. I mean, we're very well positioned. Right, listen, listen, we have to continue to keep our eye on these things. Of course, there's no guarantees. I could be wrong, but I don't think that I am. But I try to stay balanced and reasonable. But this is what I'm seeing when I'm looking at this. There's no liquidity. So XLM can provide liquidity. Um, it's my humble opinion. That's what they say. It provides liquidity for otherwise illiquid assets. It's still on their website. The banks have no liquidity, but you're, you're positioning yourself to work with the legacy system who across the board doesn't have liquidity. Their governments don't have liquidity. Their banks don't have liquidity. They're deep in debt. Well, the governments are far deep in debt. You sort of just hit the debt ceiling. They're trying to figure that out. What, are you going to raise the debt ceiling again? If they do, <laughs> you're going to default, right? Kick the can down the road or default. Either way, it's going to be bad. How do you solve that problem without liquidity? Well, didn't it, wasn't it somebody from Stellar was the one who said had that phrase that they used to iterate a few times? They were like, liquidity, 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 right? What happened to that? Hmm? Try to be quiet on that, right? Try to be quiet on that because you don't want people to know. Same thing with XRP. Everything about the bank coins is always hidden and kept quiet. They don't want the people knowing, although they use the people as a mask. See, we're trying to help the people. We're trying to help the people who are banked or unbanked and get the unbanked and never seen them a day in their lives. Mm -mm, mm -mm, be careful. Be careful. It's big money going to be pouring into uh, the bank coins. How much? I don't know. Which ones come first? I don't know. That I don't know. I don't proclaim to know things I don't know. But I just know there's big money waiting to flood into these projects. You have to stay up to date on the catalyst and make your own decisions. To know for yourself is the best. Uh, so in, in relying on yourself is the best. Your own knowledge. Make your own decisions. So now let's move on to here. All right. Got a little algorithm news to uh, get to. So I wanted to cover this because um, I typically speak just about the central bank of Italy working with Algorand and then the insurance company. We've done quite a few videos covering different aspects of that, but I don't want to leave out that there's actually multiple, multiple uh, massive financial institutions that Algorand is going to be working with in Italy. I've, I've like glossed over it, but I want to give you specifics. Okay. And then we can actually look into these businesses to see how much money is moving through them if we should choose. And I'm probably definitely going to choose to do that. Do that. So it says here, this is from the, uh, the, the uh, it's from ledgerinsights.com, and this is who will be participating in the digital sureties uh, program in Italy. It says here the organizations participating are Aquadoto Pugliese. I'm sorry about that if I mispronounced something. My apologies. Ans Lombardi, Ansi Digitali, Ansi Lombardia, Aon, Osmel, Osolombarda. Osel Bank Mediolanum, Bank Monte di Pasci di Siena. That's two banks. 
Banca Popular, so popular bank, di Pugilia. Banca Popular di Sondrio, the two more banks. Banco BPM, another bank. Cattolica Asi Corazioni. Oh my goodness, it's making it sound like I can't read. So, <laughs> Sidakari. Bari Municip Municipality. <laughs> my goodness, let me not even try. Uh, Milan Municipality. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm just going to say the ones that I can actually do. But you see how many banks so far? Ikria Banca. Bank. Another bank. What's it going to do to the price of Algorand? That's the point here. Look at all these banks and financial institutions. What's it going to do to price if they're moving value across Algorand? It's my humble belief they're going to use Algorand in a multitude of ways. Why would you use it in only one? And on top of that, Algorand is highly respected in Italy. You see Silvio Macaulay make an impact every time he goes there. So I believe that this is only going to grow. So you have a multitude of banks. So we're definitely going to look into some of these. Roma Capitali, Regione Lombardia, Turna, uh, Real Group, Aria. I mean, all of these. So there's over like 30, 30 or 31 financial institutions that are going to be using this system. That's major. That's huge. It's something we definitely got to stay on top of, in my humble opinion. OK, so now let's move on to another article here. So this little article here on uh, BNCrypto.com is titled Binance Users Can't Transfer Below $100,000 Via Swift. There's always a problem with Swift. I told you people are going to be done with Swift. They don't want to use a weapon. Swift is a weapon. And on top of that, they have all these limitations. Who wants to continue to operate with systems that continue to 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 uh, tell you what to do and severely limit you? Nobody wants that. Swift is finished. Uh, I, don't, I don't. It doesn't even matter the reasoning behind this. It's, n it's nonsense when you have the DLTs, the new financial system going up and you're not limited to what you can send where or how much you can send. The crypto exchange blamed the new decision on an unnamed banking partner. It said the bank was restricting act restricting access for all of its quote crypto exchange clients as of press time. No new crypto exchange had announced a similar restriction. They're all in league with Swift. They understand what's going on. Some of some of these legacy system actors, um, they're rogue. And not all are going to be in favor of crypto. They never have been. We just need a good amount and we have them. And we need to win the overall war. You know, the SEC case is just one battle in the war. It says Binance said the disruption does not affect its other services. The exchange users, it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It added that it was actively working to find an alternate solution for the Swift USD situation. That's interesting. You don't you can't find any other solution, really. Hmm, that's interesting. That's an interesting statement, Binance. Very interesting. But go ahead. You've been having a lot of problems, Binance. I would be careful. Certain energy comes back to you. So we have another article here, and it's, it's on Cointelegraph.com and it's titled Central African Republic Eyes Legal Framework for Crypto Adoption Africa. More activity in Africa. Who's deep in Africa? XLM. XRP, Algorand, Hedera also, don't forget Hedera is deep in, deep in the main region and deep in South Africa as well. Biggest bank by assets, as a matter of fact. So there's a 15 member committee is tasked with working on a legal framework that will allow cryptocurrencies to operate in Central African Republic and expedite the development of the national economy. They're, I told you they know. They know by using these technologies, it's Africa's time, it's Latin America's time. This is the opportunity that the people have been waiting for. They see it. I'm, th this is what they're saying here. <laughs> and it could make that price go up. Africa is sitting on a lot of resources that they themselves can benefit from now. They can tokenize that value now. They can move that value easily now. It takes some time to build. But then once that value is flowing across chain, what does it do to those prices? If any of the bank coins do become involved in uh, 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 tokenizing the commodities that Africa has, what does it do to that price? Something I keep my eye on. And Africa is definitely positioning itself and doing it well. It says here, Central African Republic, the CAR, C-A-R, 
a developing country in Central, uh, a developing country in Central Africa set up a 15 member committee uh, responsible for drafting a bill on the use of cryptocurrencies and tokenization in the region. That tokenization is what's important. I'm telling you, according to Faustin Archang Tudera, the president of the CAR, cryptocurrencies can potentially help eradicate the country's financial barriers. He believed in creating a business friendly environment supported by a legal framework for cryptocurrency usage. So we'll keep our eyes on this and, and just see where it's going. This could get very interesting. There's a lot of activities happening. So now let's move on here to another article. The debt ceiling. So here's an article and it's titled what debt ceiling means for you. This is on time.com. As you know, the United States just they hit their debt ceiling recently. They're they're scrambling, trying to figure out what they want to do. Do they do they want to default? That would be tragic. <sighs> if they default. It's the new financial system's time. But as I said, the people are going to have to survive uh, uh, what could be a very very bad financial crash. They could raise it again, but it's like kicking the can down the road. We'll we'll see what they do. It says here. The U.S. hit its debt ceiling of $31.4 trillion on Thursday, raising economic concerns. Uh, and everyone knows that. We're going to get to the part, though, hopefully, where they're telling us what it means, uh, what it could mean for the people. The Treasury Department has begun using a series of extraordinary measures, quote unquote, to avoid a government default on its debt, which buys the U.S. about six months to either raise the debt ceiling or come up with a creative way out. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has said she doesn't anticipate Americans will feel you don't anticipate you either know or you don't doesn't anticipate that doesn't bring comfort like I don't want comfort. I want to know the facts. Show me why. Anyway, anyway, she doesn't anticipate Americans will feel the effects before June. It's an interesting way to put that, but that Congress needs to negotiate. Oh, boy. A solution fast. Waiting for them, huh? OK. No one knows what would happen if the no one. No, I know you didn't just say that. Time. Time.com. I don't I don't read your magazine. I don't read your website. Uh, I probably may have done maybe an article or two. So I don't know you. But why would you say that? No one knows. Why would you say that? You know exactly what's going to happen. Financial collapse would happen. But OK. All right. Let's pretend that you don't know anything about finances. Let's continue on here. And it may not happen fast, but definitely the first domino will have been tipped. Which is why they're scrambling. They wouldn't be scrambling if this wasn't really bad. Anyway, what happens if you don't pay your debt? And you're in a world where rapidly you have other world powers uh, rising up that are going to be backing their fiat currencies with all types of commodities that they're sitting on, by the way, <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't need this in conjunction with everything else you're going through right now. It will be very bad. Anyway, let's continue right here. No one knows what would happen if U.S. defaults on his debt, which would be a historic first. There's a, haven't they raised the debt ceiling before, right? They kick the can down the road. How, how far can you kick this can down the road? How far do you think before they actually have to face it? We'll see. But experts, here we go. But experts warn it would likely, then why would you say, let me pause right there, everyone. Then why would you say no one knows if the experts are about to tell you? What kind of article is this? Oh my goodness. No one knows what will happen, but then you say experts warn. Experts warn it would likely ripple into a global financial crisis the one we've been warning everybody i've been talking about debt on this channel for almost a year and a half i've been talking about the world debt i told the people it was disgusting didn't it didn't i then then uh, uh we've been talking also uh, uh about the united states debt for almost a year and a half haven't we everyone then nobody cared now, now so now the experts are telling you are you going to listen now says experts warn it will likely ripple into a global financial crisis. When we said it, everybody said, oh, no, 
You don't know what you're talking about. Everything's fine. The financial system is fine. The banks are fine. The governments are fine. That's what they said when we said it. I've been saying for a year and a half. Once again, I want to say that because we've been ringing the alarm. Now that the experts say it, is this going to get some, that aspect of it, is that going to get some mainstream coverage? I wouldn't know. I don't watch mainstream. I don't watch your mainstream. I don't listen to your mainstream brainwashing nonsense. I, I, I don't. I don't take it. I don't I don't read your mainstream nonsense like if this is I don't know if it's time mainstream. I don't know. But um, I don't. So I wouldn't know. But are you going to cover it? You going to tell the people? I don't know. Are you going to take it serious now that a global financial crisis is on the horizon? They can't keep raising the debt ceiling. Oh, my word. Um. Then they go into this here. It says, whenever tax revenue doesn't fully cover government programs, such as defense spending, social programs, government salaries. How about we decrease some of those government salaries? <laughs> I didn't actually say that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. They're getting paid a whole lot. How is it that they uh, let's not ask certain questions. Could cause trouble. Which it says uh, government salaries, which it has every year since 2001. The government must borrow money, right? But it's restricted by a set limitation on how much debt the U.S. can incur. That's funny and hilarious, considering how much debt they have. Per the U.S. Constitution, what? Like they really obey the Constitution? <laughs> Congress needs to approve all borrowing. Oh, man, that's so much comfort. So Congress implemented the debt ceiling that they keep raising. So that's, oh, that's a heck of a ceiling. You know, it's a ceiling above me right now, but I can't exactly just push it up because I want a little bit more room in the studio. Uh, don't worry. Um, I know Last Fan Standing is, and he's in, uh, Last Fan Standing is in the comment section right now. Alpha Neva, you watched the video. You know about Congress. I, I know, I know. I'm still gonna I'm still gonna make some comments if I come across it. I, you know, I know maritime law and the people. I know, I know. All right. <laughs> hey, love you, last fan standing. Appreciate you being here. Um, <laughs> says Congress needs to approve all borrowing, so Congress implemented the debt ceiling. Blah blah blah. All right. Uh, it's Congress. It's Congress's responsibility. How do you? Oh my word. How do you put responsibility on irresponsible people? How do you? Uh, Eric Swanson, a professor of economics. So you're pretending like you don't know that these people are highly irresponsible. Have you seen the way that the country is going? Right. A professor of economics at the University of California, Irvine, tells time. Why did you talk to him? Why? I don't understand. Or her, him, whoever this is. Like, why, why did that person... And, and you just took this one little quote. OK, well, we have another one here. Let's see what they have to say. If you're going to pass a law that the spending is this and the taxes are this, then whatever the difference is has to be debt. You have to pass the law that authorizes the debt. Uh, uh, OK, I'm just going to I'm not even going <laughs> to. Oh, man. And I'm going to explain now. I'm Professor Alphanine. I want to explain to everyone out there that there is a, su there is a substance called water and that water is wet. <laughs> no, you know, <don't> <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. I'm so oh. anyway. Swanson is hopeful that Congress will avoid disaster by reaching an eventual agreement to raise the debt ceiling. Oh, there, and there's a there's debate over this, huh? You you fumbled the ball, you fumbled the bag, as the kids would say, and there's debate over whether you who fumbled everything and messed everything up is going to lift the the the, the limit the the limit the debt ceiling whatever you however you want to phrase that so that the people can live a little bit longer in sort of a normal way right oh man this is unbelievable this is I, I don't know man everything is just so crazy and not everything but like this mainstream stuff is so psycho crazy it's unbelievable now 
Let's go here to SeekingAlpha.com. They have a little article here on silver, sweet, sweet silver. We've been talking about it for almost a year. And uh, I've let people know, like, hey, I believe I personally believe silver is going up. I've done the research on silver. I see how much it is needed and there's not enough. So if it's needed greatly and there's not enough, theoretically, the price will go up. I've heard others say iterate the same thing or not same, but like similar, like other people's interest in silver is a little bit different. Um, their reasonings are different, but we all have catalysts. That's the point. We have these catalysts. And they're solid catalysts. It, 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 silver is definitely in high demand, or at least it's going to be. Let's read this a little bit here. It says here, analysts say the price of silver could hit $30 an ounce this year, the highest since February 2013. And people are sitting on a ton of silver. Dri driven by supply shortages of the metal, as well as the ten tendency for silver to outgain gold in periods of high inflation. Let's just concentrate on silver. Like it's this comparative way of thinking, you don't need it. Let's just talk about what's at hand, silver. They do that same thing with XRP, XRP, Cardano, XRP, Bitcoin. Like just talk about XRP. That's how, that's personally what I like. Let's get to what's important. Silver is in a shortage. Boom. <laughs> According to Nikki Shields, head of metal strategy at Precious Metals Company, MKS Pamp. Pamp has been doing a great job lately providing information. Oh, I, I like you, Pamp. I like what you're doing. Uh, said, noting significant drawdowns in available physical stocks held in New York and London's physical hubs. More so than seen in gold, of course. But, but yeah, of course. I think that would be logical because silver is used in a lot of different ways that gold is not. Gold, in my humble opinion, is more of a pure store of value. It can be used in different ways, but store of value is it. Silver, like I said, a myriad of different parts it's utilized for in these electric cars and all and more and more of them are being produced to be rolled out in the future, not just by Tesla, but by a lot of different companies. Solar panels, more and more people I'm seeing around with solar panels. Silver is one of the best conductors of, of uh, electricity. And in some, I won't say all, in some of those solar panels, silver is being utilized. So then you have that. So there's a lot of different ways that silver is being used, but like they said, there's not enough. So theoretically that price would go up. We'll see, we'll see what happens, not financial advice. Shields expects silver will post deficits of more than 100 million ounces whoo, during the next five years. With industrial demand, nearly half of total demand sparking the tight supply, Shields said. Citing silver's track record of delivering investor returns of nearly 20% a year in years where inflation is high and how cheap silver remains relative to gold, silver could climb to $30, $30 an ounce this year. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. it. Says first month Comex silver for January deliver, uh, deliver, delivery settled negative 2.6% to $23.83 an ounce this week. The metal's worst week since mid November. That's not important right now. And, um, and actually, for anybody who wanted to get in, that's probably pretty good. I'm, I'm gonna assume a lot of people probably get in at that little price, price right there. But What's important is where it is going and what the future holds. Once again, stay on top of the catalyst and you know when, what is going to happen. All right. So now, now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.